maxillary central incisor versus hardwood gym floor during a basketball game on this 15-year-old patient. Stick around, see how I manage this one. I'm Bill Nudera and welcome to my channel dedicated to clinical endodontic education. This patient presented in my office two days post blunt trauma of this central incisor, causing a complicated crown fracture and pulpal exposure. The traumatic injury was immediately managed by the local general dentist who placed a pulp cap and rebonded the fragment of tooth structure back into place. The cone beam scan shows the evidence of the actual bonded tooth fragment back in place, but no other remarkable findings. There was no mobility, there was no spontaneous pain, the tooth was a bit tender to percussion and bite, but nothing significant based on the traumatic injury that occurred. Because this tooth was testing normal, I saw no need for any further treatment at this time. My plan was to have the patient back in three months and reevaluate and reperform pulp testing. Two months into the observation period, we get a telephone call saying that the fragment of the tooth that was rebonded had suddenly turned dark and spontaneously fell off. I advised the patient to return to the clinic immediately. This is what I saw. It appears that the trauma not only caused a complicated crown fracture, but a secondary oblique fracture on the palatal as well. We can see the exposed pulp and the fact that it's necrotic. It's clear that the fracture violates the biologic width and most likely extends to, if not below, the alveolar crest. And this will no doubt affect the prognosis specifically from a restorative aspect. But this is a 15-year-old patient, and it's in the best interest that we keep this tooth in place as long as we possibly can. So the first step here is to get an idea of how severe this oblique fracture was and what we have left to work with. So I made an intersocular incision on the palatal just to detach the remaining tooth structure from the gingival tissues and removed the fractured fragment. And this is what was left. Certainly not ideal. But with some ortho extrusion, some perio surgery, there is potential that we could get some retention from this tooth and possibly long term retention from this tooth if this can be managed appropriately with a multidisciplinary approach. So, once that tooth fragment was removed, I went ahead and proceeded with root canal treatment. I placed a cotton pellet in that void on the palatal side just to control the heme. I used a split dam technique with gingival retention on the buckle and rubber dam blockout material. I accessed the tooth obtained my working length, and irrigated with a positive pressure irrigation technique. I didn't use any engine-driven instruments for this case. The canal itself was large enough that I was able to use just my irrigation protocol to clean out this root canal system. The canal was dried, and I obturated with a single cone obturation technique. The access was closed with a sponge and cavit. And since the fractured part of the tooth was lost, I did the best I could to restore this tooth with the limited materials I had in my office. Now remember, I'm an endodontist. I don't have a lot of restorative materials in my office, but I do have some. And it's certainly not the perfect shade, but it's better than nothing. And it was able to protect this area and give this patient some sort of aesthetic value until the patient could return to the general dentist and have a proper restoration placed. I chose not to extend the restoration beyond the gingival tissues on the palatal because I wanted it accessible for cleanliness and I didn't want to create any issues with the palatal tissues and try to force material down in that area. Here's my final endodontic result. Again, no files were used in this case whatsoever. Irrigation and passive agitation only. The next step for this patient is to get a consultation with the orthodontist and periodontist to start planning for those next treatments. I certainly plan to follow the progress of this case and I'll keep you posted as I get new information. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video presentation of mine today, and I hope you subscribe to my channel and stay up to date with all my new videos. I'm Bill Mudera. Thanks for watching.